Hello, my name is Anthony. I'll be your storyteller tonight as we cozy up with a winter tale that takes place in the town of Whoville. We'll explore streets, forests and mountains that are still. We'll feel the magic of Christmas and the peace it brings. But most of all, we'll let go of the day and all stressful things. Before we begin, let's take just a moment to really sink in. Lie down in your comfortable bed and close your eyes. As you lie back or curl up, picture dark, starry skies. Here, there is no worry, no tasks you must do. This moment right now, it's all about you. After such a long day, it's time for you to let yourself rest. The day is now over, and above all, you did your best. Yes, now is the time to breathe in. One, two, three, four. As you exhale right now, feel the tension in you no more. Breathe in. One, two, three, four. And as you exhale, feel that tension no more. Breathe in. One, two, three, four, and as you exhale, feel that tension no more. Breathe in. One, two, three, four, and as you exhale, feel that tension no more. You are safe here, you are loved and sleep is near. In this moment, please, know there's nothing to fear. Everything is okay, everything is looking bright. Now is the time to close your eyes and relax for the night. Long, long ago, in a land of glaciers and cedar forests coated in snow, there was the cosy, quaint town of Whoville, whose residents you may not know. They were Who's creatures of whimsy and wonder, who built houses with brightly coloured roofs that they could build warm homes under. Their town was awash with colour and glee, from the cobblestone streets to the homes that were blue orange, pink and green. The buildings swooped and curled and waved, and each door was rather beautifully engraved. The streets were laced with parks full of truffula trees and fizzy bee flowers, shaded by tall spruces and pines towering above. On days where the snow fell in soft, fluffy flakes, the little who children would gather and throw snowballs by the ice-coated lakes. But the Who's were the best at one special thing. Months before Christmas, they would spend weeks merrymaking. Garlands aglow with twinkling Christmas bulbs were hung between their candlelit streetlights. Christmas trees adorned every corner, twinkling with ornaments trinkets and bows shining bright. The Who's spent every day baking holiday treats, Who hash and Who pies and plenty of sweets. The streets smelled of sugar and spices of joy, enough to brighten the spirits of every Who, girl or boy. On the first day of winter, when the moon rose nice and high, the Who's would gather in the town square and sing at the sky. They'd bring in the biggest Christmas tree they could find and tie around lights and bulbs and ornaments 
with holiday designs in mind. For hours, they'd ring in the first day of the season, reminding each other they were there for a reason, to smile and to laugh, to spend time with each other, to appreciate and respect and love one another. But as the Who's celebrated the season with cheer, there was someone who wasn't, and he was quite near. Up on Mount Crumpet, high above the town, there was a creature that was said to have a permanent frown. The Grinch was a creature who was hairy and green, but most of all, he was positively mean. High up on the mountain, tucked away in the clouds, the Grinch lived alone. It was all he allowed. The Grinch hated the holiday season, but no one knew why. They didn't know for what reason. Perhaps it was the garland or the scent of Christmas trees. Perhaps it was that he didn't like to play outside and freeze. It could be, perhaps, that he didn't think right, or maybe it's that his head was screwed on a bit too tight. No, no one knew the whole story at all, but many Who's thought it may be that his heart was three sizes too small. No matter the reason, the garland or trees, he looked down at the Who's with hatred every Christmas Eve. He sat in his cold cave and glared on down grunting and groaning and rolling his eyes at the town. He hated the warm candlelights, the way he could see their hooey smiles shining bright, and no matter what he did, he hated their singing with all his might. He watched as every who in Whoville beneath danced and rushed around, hanging cedar and mistletoe wreaths. He knew what came next. They'd hang the garland, trim the trees. He knew every dance and song and step. And the thing he dreaded most of all were the sounds that would rise from the town after dawn. The little hoos would tear open their presents and bows. They'd rip open boxes and their stockings in rows. All the little Who's, the girls and the boys, would run through the town, tossing around noisy toys. They'd play with Who trains and flibbery libbets. They'd bang on Who drums and play games of Who cricket. They'd play and they'd play and they'd play and they'd play, not just for hours, for the whole of Christmas Day. The Grinch could put up with most things, that's true, but the noise from their merrymaking, he simply couldn't do. He hated the yelling, the cheers of glee, the sheer sound of the celebration was enough to make the Grinch want to flee. And then they'd eat meals, they'd eat meals all day, and they'd feast at their banquet loud enough to turn the Grinch's fur grey. Yes, they'd feast and they'd feast, and they'd feast and they'd feast. They'd dine on who pudding and their precious roast beast. They'd have who desserts of who pie and who cakes. The Grinch didn't know how much more he could take. And then, they would do something the Grinch liked the least. They'd gather in the town square right after their feast. Every who in Whoville, the young and the old, would stand close together and hands they would hold. With Christmas bells ringing, the who's down in Whoville, well, they would start singing. They'd sing, 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 and the Grinch's small ears 
would ring, 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 ring. And the more they would sing, the more the Grinch would begin to think, I must stop this whole thing. For years I've put up with the cheer and the noise it must bring. Somehow, some way, I must stop Christmas from coming. The Grinch paced and he paced, trying to come up with an evil plan. And as his pacing sped up, his mind, oh, how it ran. The Grinch rubbed his palms together, a scheme in his brain. And in his mind, oh, he knew it wasn't going to wane. He got to work quickly with a needle and thread, and on his floor, red fabric he spread. He laughed in his throat, why it's time to make my Santa Claus coat. He got to work, snipping and sewing and seaming, and by the end, his Santa Claus coat, it was gleaming. He knew he had come up with the perfect trick, with his hat and coat, He'd look just like Saint Nick. But there's something missing, just one thing. The Grinch needed a reindeer, but a reindeer, well, they're quite hard to bring. He looked all around, but because reindeer are rare, there was none to be found. But the Grinch had a way to fix that, and quick, he put his fingers up, and snapped with a click. His dog Max came rushing out, coming to see what the fuss was about. With Max in the room, the Grinch smiled and said, If I can't find a reindeer, I'll just make one instead. He knelt beside Max and took out some red thread. Then he tied a big horn on the top of Max's head. Max wobbled and tripped, the horn was so heavy he just slipped. But the Grinch didn't care, no, the Grinch had bigger things to worry about, and they were in Whoville down there. The Grinch rushed out and grabbed a sled, tying Max to the front of it, and down the hill he was led. The sled started down, down down, down toward the Who's, who were a snooze in their tiny, sleepy town. As Max ran down, 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 he huffed. Hurry up, Maxie boy, we must get there before morning, the Grinch puffed. They arrived in Whoville without a Who in sight. The Grinch knew he was going to end Christmas and he would do it that night. The town was quiet. The snow fell through the silent air. The Who's were tucked in their cozy beds, dreaming happy dreams with no care. The Grinch climbed on out of his old ramshackle sled, and with big bags in hand, he moved on ahead. He slid down the chimney, It was quite a tight squeeze, but if Santa could do it, the Grinch could do it. It was a breeze. He plopped to the ground, nary making a sound, and when he looked up, what's the first thing he found? Why, the who stockings hung up in a row. The Grinch sneered his Grinchy sneer. These will be the first things to go. The Grinch snuck and he slithered, his dastardly deeds quite unpleasant. He took everything out of the room, not even leaving a present. He took puzzles, bikes, roller skates, drums. He took checkerboards and popcorn. He even took all the gum. He took all the presents he could carry, and with an attitude most scary, he stuffed them in his own bag and up the chimney he climbed quite merry. But the Grinch wasn't done, 
No, there was more to do, quite a ton. He crept in the kitchen and opened the fridge, and he took all the food. No, he didn't leave even a smidge. He took the Who cupcakes. He took the roast beast. He took every piece of those poor Who's feast. He cleaned out their fridge in just a quick flash. The nasty Grinch even took their Who hash. Back into the living room, the Grinch tiptoed with glee. For my final trick, I'll take this nice tree. The Grinch took the tree, bulbs and all. And as he stuffed it up the chimney, he heard the strangest call. Quiet as a mouse, there was a little who standing behind him in the house. Why, it was little Cindy Lou who, who was no more than two. The Grinch stopped what he was doing, in his brain excuses brewing. Why are you taking our tree, Mr. Santa Claus? She asked with a pause, but the Grinch was so smart, so slick, he had a lie, and he came up with it quick. There's a bulb that won't light, and we can't have that on Christmas night, so I'll bring it to my workshop, my dear. I'll bring it up quickly, then rush it back here. Cindy Lou Who was tired. She rubbed her little eyes. She believed the Grinch's lies. Why, it was no surprise. She crawled back into bed, sugar plums and snowflakes dancing in her sleepy head. The Grinch got back on to his evil scheme, and wouldn't you know it, the Grinch was so mean. The one speck of food he left in the house was so small, too small, even for a mouse. Then he moved on, getting to all the Who houses, leaving not even a crumb for the other Who mouses. When he was done, the Grinch packed up his sled. He had all the bows, the presents, the Who bread. He had all the wrappings, the tinsel, the trappings. Then he rode and he rode, and he rode up Mount Crumpet, to the tippity top where he planned he would dump it. The Grinch smiled there with a devilish grin, for he knew this Christmas he did indeed win. The Who's would wake up with tears in their eyes. They'd have nothing to celebrate. They'd have not a single prize. There would be no singing, no joy, no fun. Why, if they're crying, I must hear that one. So the Grinch put his hand to his ear, knowing the Who's would be waking up near. The Grinch heard a sound rising up over the snow. It started as a whisper, but then it began to grow. But the sound wasn't sad. There were no boo-hoos, no cries. Why, the sound that he heard was quite a surprise. This sounded merry. It couldn't be true. But it was indeed merry, very when the Grinch saw down below, in a circle in the snow, was every who in Whoville, the tall and the small, singing without any presence at all. The Grinch may have tried, but Christmas it came, and my, oh my, it looked just the same. There were no bows, no wrappings, no trappings, but it seemed the Grinch couldn't stop Christmas from happening. The Grinch stood in shock, shaking up in the snow. Puzzled, he asked, how could it be so? I took all their gifts, their presents, their tags. They don't have packages or stockings or bags. The Grinch thought and he thought till his brain was quite sore. 
until he thought of something he hadn't thought of before. Perhaps Christmas isn't something you get from the store. Perhaps Christmas is something much, much more. And what happened next didn't leave the Who's perplexed. They simply say the Grinch's heart grew three sizes that day. No, his heart didn't feel heavy, not in the least. So he zipped down over the mountain and brought back the presents, brought back the feast. With a smile on his face, he even carved the roast beast. And though the Who's had been scared of the Grinch for more than a year, when he came closer, they realized they had nothing to fear. The Grinch needed love, a family, a hug. So the Who's gathered round, and they held him quite snug. They welcomed the Grinch to celebrate with them all. And the Grinch celebrated. Why, he had quite a ball. And when the sun sank down on the sleepy little town, the Who's in Whoville all gathered around, and they sang. What a sound. Yes, the Grinch's heart grew three sizes that day, and the Who's down in Whoville, they'd have it no other way. I hope you've enjoyed this sleepy, festive story, and it's helped you reach a night of peaceful sleep. Please join me again tomorrow for another sleep story.